Hey, you are along for the ride with the Mad Dog and Cole. I'm just going to kick it, Feral. Big jumps only count when you land them. <laughs> I decided to fly through the air and live in the sunlight and enjoy life as much as I could, and that's just what I'm doing. Man, what a way to start. I never get over those glorious words from our my personal idol as a kid, Mr. Evil Knievel, living in the sunlight, flying through the air, basically living his life. And man, what great advice. You know, we should all live in the sunlight just a little bit more. Be thankful just a little bit more for what we got. Oh, of course. And how can you be thankful without being thankful to all of our military personnel overseas that let us do this podcast? Of course, all of our first responders holding it down here right at home. Yep, absolutely. 100%. And all our veterans that have already done their tour, done their job. Thank you also. And of course, thank you, Kicker Performance Audio. Find them at kicker.com where you can be living loud with products for your car, truck, Jeep, motorcycle, side-by-side, golf cart, even your own personal audio products. Get living loud. Find Kicker Performance Audio at kicker.com. And what is it? White wraps matter. Thank you, Bomber Eyewear. BomberEyewear.com. Man, they float, they're tough. You can get them in multiple designs. I mean, there's just so many shapes, sizes, colors, and choices that I couldn't even begin to mention them all. But Tommy and his gang wanted to build, had the vision to build sunglasses that were the Levi's of shades, basically, where you could not only afford to own 15 or 20 pairs but you can get all different styles all different kinds all different lens colors i generally wear the boogie bomb right now i'm wearing the boogie bomb mana series limited edition uh with the dark smoke polarized ANSI 87 osha approved safety lens check them out bomber floating eyewear bomber eyewear.com of course, our man Cole with the Premix Podcast. Find him on Instagram at the Premix Podcast, sharing his passion for desert racing and all things desert through the lens of a camera and some videos and just good stuff. If you are out at a desert race and Cole's there, send him a message. Tell him, hey, I need some pictures of this. Tell him you want the Mad Dog discount. He'll take care of you. Also, living loud on stage, Mr. Cole Farrell. And a mic close to you. Hit him up if you need MC work, need your off-road event called, or just want to have a good old party. Hit up Cole. He's got you covered on the mic side, too. Of course, Kelsey Morrell Film. Find her on Instagram at Kelsey Morrell Film. All your video production, shorts, longs, commercials from start to finish, whatever you need. Find her on Instagram at Kelsey Morrell Film. Now that we've paid the bills, dude, Arena Cross, Little Rock, Arkansas. Otherwise known as Arkansas. I am home. Yeah, I'm back in the office. So it feels good. I've actually been home. Um, this is unusual for me because I've been home uh, four days instead of three. What do you even do with yourself with that extra day? How do you stay out of trouble? Um, it's tough. 
I'm not going to lie there. It's tough, but, uh, I got, I got a fair amount of, uh, projects around here to do. Um, one is I'm building a complete awesome kicker Marine audio system in my boat, uh, doing it myself. Uh, thanks to kicker Marine audio for the product. And it's, you know, it's a challenge for me. I am not an installer. Um, can I do it? Yes, absolutely. Will it get done before desert storm next month? Yes, absolutely. Um, but you know, it just, it takes me time. So, and I'm not as young as I used to be. So lying on the floor and crawling into ski lockers and little cubby holes is not quite as easy as it was a long time ago. Okay. But if you had to pick between UTV car and Marine audio, what are you picking? UTV a hundred percent. Cause everything's out there. Yeah. And I've, and I've done like a hundred of them. So and I've seen you do at least two of them. So I know you're not lying. Yeah. You actually saw me build two cars from basically ground up. Custom. And I watched with coffee in my hand. I'm like, wow, that <laughs> looks like no fun. And I better go I, back in the office. I think I built those two in seven days. Using tie downs and water lines and everything we needed to use, but it got yep. done right. <laughs> yep, for sure. It was crazy. That was a good time. But yeah, man, it's good to be home and, you know, I'm just, uh, just uh, cranking away at, at the projects at home. Um, working on some guests coming up for, for our, uh, next few episodes, um, pretty exciting stuff coming. So I'm, I'm stoked for that. And, uh, man, I, I am home four days. You may wonder, well, mad dog, you've only been home two days or three days since the first of the year. Yeah, that's correct. I am home four days because I have wrapped my portion of the AMA arena cross championships presented by kicker audio, um, for 2023. And I will be moving on to the American flat track series and a few other projects, uh, including desert storm presented by kicker Marine audio here in Lake Havasu, middle of April. And, uh, actually third weekend of April, I believe. And then, um, uh, Super Cat Fest West presented by Kicker Marine Audio the following weekend. That's a busy, uh, busy bunch of events going on down there. Yeah, yeah. Sounds it like should... it's the place to be, though, huh? Yeah, it definitely. You should come out. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I've wrapped my portion. Uh, the AMA Arena Cross Championships presented by Kicker Audio does have one more race left. Their final race in Lexington, Kentucky this weekend. And you can catch them on Ride TV or MAV TV, MAV TV, live Friday at, I believe it'll be 730 Central Time. Um, but check your local listings or check them out uh, on Instagram at, at AMA Arena Cross usa um man i i was blessed to cap my season in um little rock arkansas arkansas um yeah i was blessed to be able to travel out there work with the team one final time it was fantastic um i have never spent any time in little rock i have driven through um so being in little rock and kind of in downtown, um, it had a lot of, uh, that downtown Denver feel that we've talked about so much. Um, you didn't leave anything in your car. Let's put it that way. You know, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's authentic, you know, it's, yeah. uh, it's got culture. It's got, keeps you on your toes amazing architecture driving through town you know it is an old town for sure and it's it's uh right there on the arkansas river and and so you know that was been a major thoroughfare for years um 
And it's like, you know, they just, there's some amazingly beautiful old architecture, old churches, incredible homes. Um, you know, and the area I was in was kind of, uh, I think they consider it East maybe. Um, but they're rebuilding that whole riverfront area and, and revitalizing downtown and the riverfront area, really bringing it up nice. The arena we were at was the Barton Coliseum um, at the Arkansas, I believe it was the Arkansas State Fairgrounds. Um, old, old, old arena, uh, really big seats. It wasn't not a big floor um and not a big arena but it really big capacity wise like over 5000 seating oh wow nice yeah which is uh you know crazy considering you walk in and it's like wow this is pretty small now not as small as uh not as small as as uh Tulsa or Salem Virginia it was a little bit bigger um they actually had five lanes, which I know you're wondering, Mad Dog, how does five lanes work? You're full of sh crap. Um, they used one lane specifically as a start lane. So they didn't use a start straight for anything other than to ride a part of a corner, basically. Now, was that in the middle of the arena or was that on the side? Was that a side lane? Um, it was second lane in. If you're at the gates, it would be second lane in from the right. Gotcha. Okay. So they actually came over, came over the finish double and hung a left across the start straight into a rhythm section, basically into a flat track turn that was the whole width of the arena, which, like I said, wasn't huge. And then uh, whoops right up against the boards, man. Whoops claimed some victims. It was uh, pretty gnarly. Yeah, uh, I've seen some video and it looked like there was a lot of gnarliness all around this course, whether it be uh, obstacles or riders. Am I right? Yeah, correct. Correct. And, you know, I had the, the kicker performance audio booth set up um, and I was outside by the main entrance outside of the seating arena area. So I actually missed that action. Um, but that night when I got back to the, I got back to the hotel about the same time, a bunch of the track crew did. And there was probably five of them that have video of that action, which we, we will get to for sure. Um, uh, so yeah, and no, I was, it was pretty good. Qualifying was good. You know, I got there, um, coming along for the ride on the trip out, man. Uh, had a really early flight out of Vegas, uh, like eight 50 in the morning. So I was, uh, up and out at just after four to get to the airport on time. Yeah. And I know and, how, I know how you like driving in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I could have fell asleep and the car would have drove itself at this point. That was my 12th, uh, 12th or 13th trip. Uh, just to Vegas airport this year, let alone to Vegas for other things. So, um, yeah, man, it was, uh, yeah, hot my flight and it was a uh, good old Southwest and I had a connection. The best timing I could get was the early flight, um, had a connection in Dallas and, uh, who knew that Southwest flew into Dallas Love Field, not Dallas Fort Worth. Uh, did you not know and needed to know? But I guess it wasn't really that important because, you know, I I just didn't really know. So they, I started checking it out and it's like Dallas Love Field is a commercial air, uh, airfield. Uh, I don't know how far from Dallas Fort Worth but only Southwest flies in there commercially. How weird. And you would like, think that Dallas Fort Worth is so big. They wouldn't even need to go to the other yeah. one. Yeah. It's a major hub for Southwest. I guess they have like 20 gates or 19 gates or something. Huh? Learn something new every day on the road with you. Yeah. It was crazy. So, and busy. Holy cow. Like 
wasn't busy, busy, but being a hub, there's a lot of people, you know, uh, making connections there. So inside TSA, it was, uh, it was busy. There's a lot of freaking people in there. So really, yeah, but you know, got there on time. Uh, we actually got there a little bit delayed, but I had a, I had a pretty, uh, long layover, almost three hour layover. So wasn't that bad. Killed a little time. Um, yeah. And hopped the flight it was a short flight, like 48 minutes to little rock, um, dropped in there. Boom. Got my rental car. Oh yeah. Yet again not another compact Kia Soul or similar. Was it a four banger drag racer Mustang again? It was not. It was not. It was a Honda Accord. Oh, wow. So, I mean, I don't know, just perfectly boring, I guess. Yeah, completely, completely silver Honda Accord. What's more under the boring? radar, right? Yeah. Yeah. Completely under the radar. Um, didn't stop me from getting wasn't so far under the radar that I didn't get a parking ticket. And we're going to get into that because uh, city of Little Rock and I got a little duking out to do. I'm not very happy with them. Um, ultimately, they won, but they're dumb. So, you know, whatever. Take it for what you will. Um, but yeah, man, got into the arena the next day, got the booth set up. Um, got them fine kicker audio products out met the dealer that was going to work with me from uh um art street audio uh rocky if you're listening man shout out great job uh super nice guy we got all set up um man they were they were behind on building the track like when i got there at uh 9 30 or so nine between nine nine thirty on uh, on uh, Thursday, they were had dirt out for maybe half a track, and it's a dirt floor, but they couldn't use much of it. And they were trucking dirt in um, one dump truck at a time. Ooh, that's a long morning. Yeah. So I uh, I talked to Vernon at VMAC Tracks the next day, and uh, he said he wrapped. Uh, right about 10 o'clock at night yeah and then practice starts the next morning right so yeah yeah didn't have a lot of time to play with no and a lot of that dirt was really wet it was weird because it was like they're pulling from two different piles like there was a couple areas where it was like super dry but the rest was like so wet you stepped on it and it was moving oh so really hard to build off of huh yeah really really hard to pack um, so yeah, we just wrapped Thursday and my good friend, Rob Goodwin, uh, the championship bike chief, uh, and I went out for dinner and thank you, Rob, if you're listening, appreciate you picking up the tab. Um, you know, we went, we found this, uh, one of your soft spots, bro. We found an authentic Irish pub. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Get you so. some get you some shepherd's pie and warm you up yeah i had bangers and mash but it was right. it was dang good it was dang good um ran into one of the track builders from enduro cross who's doing his uh basically winter gig if you will building monster jam tracks and uh we got to talking. I'm like, oh, who's riding? Who's doing the freestyle this week? And he said, oh, it's LaRue and the guy with the dreads and Wilson. I'm like, oh, really? No, those are all my bros. So, yeah. So I uh, I hit LaRue up, Jared LaRue FMX. Follow him on Instagram at Jared LaRue. I think it's underscore 56, 56 not a hundred percent sure now that i blabbed my mouth off um but anyways i hit him up i'm like bro what's up You're in the same town don't even hit me up and uh he called me like instantly he goes you're in phoenix i said no you're in little rock he goes oh no i don't get to little rock till tomorrow morning 
I'm like, oh, okay. So You're then like, we well, got I just came from Havasu, so. Yeah. Um, so we got to talking. I was like, oh, you guys should come over to the show. He said they were dead. They didn't have to do anything really on Friday. I was like, oh, right, come over and check it out. So um, anyway, yeah. So <laughs> random people you run into at an Irish pub in Little Rock, Arkansas, that you know that that know people that you know so how oh, cool that was pretty rad and, um yeah man just called it night got back to the hotel dude um which stayed in a really really nice brand new holiday Inn express um people were were pretty nice um the people weren't as nice as they were at the not so comfort in Salem, Virginia. Those people were super nice, but nonetheless, um, these people were okay. The, the hotel was really nice. Um, dude, that was where everybody was staying. It was basically, that was the host hotel for the event. So, um, so got up and got going Friday morning, man, got around, had a little oatmeal with the one and only Wes Kane, our boy. Um, and then uh, just like five blocks away, local donut shop called, I think it was called Hertz Donuts. Um, pretty good donuts. A little bit on the spendy side, but, you know, it was my last go round with the crew. So I got them a couple few extra, got them the specialty ones um got me a parking ticket city of little rock you suck so i'm sure you've parked in parking spots that require that have meters yeah they have them over there in orange county i know because i've used them yeah um when you go to the fancy beach side absolutely yeah so i pull in pull in i'm like all right cool uh open spot just right around the corner great hop out walk up to the meter to uh as i'm pulling my wallet out you know oh no there's no card beeper scanner thing you know i'm like okay well where's the qr code there's no qr code what does it take all chuck e cheese coins huh change yes only change you know what little rock you need to change yeah, and there is no, they're so antiquated that the damn parking ticket I got, you can't pay online. Yeah, they don't have the internet. You have to, I guess not. You know, you have to mail them a stupid check. Wow. I'm like, who writes a damn check? Anymore? And they want well, certified do, mail. Yeah, I'm like, whatever. It's, you know, is what it is. For the love of donuts. It was worth it. Well, good. Yeah, they were they were damn good donuts. You dude. should put on the Hertz Donuts Yelp. Be like, hey, here's what happened, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a bad idea. Um, so yeah, I got over to the arena and you know got the crew set up with their snackety snacks and um, man, just uh, got things final pimped out, changed a few things around in the way I had the display set up. Um, really tight in that arena. Oh, really yeah. tight um no room for the big 10 by 20 matter of fact the i ended up setting up in front of one of the concession built-in concession counters that they weren't using oh geez so it was that tight yeah yeah, yeah. so but you know super uh super good and they got on to practice and and uh you know it was good to see the guys run um track was gnarly it was some areas were rutting out pretty gnarly um getting pretty pretty uh techy technical for the ruts um specifically the whoops and the takeoff for the finish double um whoops no big deal people find their way around or or do them one at a time or or, you know, jump them two, 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 two. Um, everybody has to hit the finish double, right? If you roll it, if you were in first place and you rolled it with the competition we have, you'd be in eighth place. Yeah, you'd you know? be on Saturday's program. 
Yeah, 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 exactly. The B main, B main yeah. status. And we know what happens in the B main. The, yeah, you don't the, get paid. <laughs> yeah, the, re the rest of you might not, but we're going to go into that in a little bit. Um, so, yeah, man, uh, they got into Q1, qualifying one, and then qualifying two. And I know Vernon from VMAC was, was – busting ass working on the track in between every time um first practice uh bitterman ran a 23 8 um was fastest in practice um so that gives you an idea you know and i think in tulsa we were running 19 fives and uh in salem we were running i don't know do you remember 20 somethings wasn't it? 20, I'd have to think, yeah. So it's two seconds, almost three seconds longer, you know? Um, so Bitterman cranked out fast time in practice. Uh, Peters was a 2401. So really, you're talking, you know, a tenth of a second. Um, Jared Lesher uh, on the two smoke uh, was a 2411. So again, a tenth, you know, and this is practice. So um isaiah clark cool kid uh cranked a 24-3 and uh <clears throat> so you know they were reno's own favorite aaron simino was qualified uh, a practice way down seventh place but um you know he's always there at the end right he doesn't crash out um which clark has really fought this year he's been fast but he's he's been uh you know pretty uh he's been on the ground a lot because of his riding style which i admire but it makes me sick to my stomach to watch him because it's like dude you're you're going to bite it you know but it's exciting to watch so we had um i think uh ch -ch -ch -ch. I think we ended up running like there was a, I don't remember who had fast time. I think Bitterman pulled it out last minute. Um, but in Q1, Bitterman was all the way down in seventh, still running a 24 1. And uh, Isaiah Clark won a, ran a 23 2. Um, and of course, our boy KP, Kyle Peters, ran a 23 2 2 two one hundreds off um lesher ran a 23 five uh you know so i mean bitter bitterman ran a 24 one in q1 and i don't think i i didn't actually take a picture of the q2 i think bitterman ended up with fast time um and i think peters was third might have been Bitterman, Lesher, Peters. Anyways, uh, on to the night program, man. They opened the doors. Oh, yeah, dude. They they said it was going to rain and going to be some gnarly storms. And so um, right, uh, right before the gates opened at 6, I stuck out just before that um, to have a smoky snack out back. And, uh, dude, it was pouring like miserably pouring and i'm standing out there and i hear this and about that time my phone lit up with tornado warnings um yeah and then another siren went off and so i stood out there and was like wow at first i was like huh that's weird i wonder why, why they're testing them right now you know <laughs> um yeah for reals i'm that dumb i'm that guy um but then yeah as it turns out apparently there's a tornado right in the area so um, wow pretty... yeah that's a that's a hard pass for me that's a big no for me dog yeah yeah i don't yeah it would have been for me but it's what i do you know it's like tornadoes ain't gonna stop me it's a might not giant... stop you but you don't want the arena cross to stop no, no, a giant brick building. I mean, it said it was a shelter, so figured I was pretty safe no matter what. Let's go racing. Um, <laughs> and they did, man. They 
they dropped the flag and they were off and running. Uh, <clears throat> good, good racing from what I hear. I didn't really get to see any. Um, Bitter Man led one of the mains. They ended, I think the main two when him and Peter started from the back. He got out front before Peters did. And uh, for whatever reason, they ran 22 laps. Wow. And uh, it was, you know, there's a lot of comments about the extra two laps they ran, um, you know, because KP ended up passing KB on like the second to the last lap. And so, you know, Bitterman is, is just a Nats ass close to being on the top of the podium. And it wouldn't really surprise me to see him do it this weekend when they're in Lexington. Um, man, he has got the whoops figured out. He is faster through the whoops than anybody. And he's not a small guy. No. So he's working to get through them, you know? Yeah, he posted on social media today, basically saying one round to go. <laughs> I, it's game on. So I hope, uh, I mean, obviously, like all those guys, but I hope he does it because if he gets a W on the last round, I mean, that's just going to build the hype for next year. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think Hicks is coming back for Kentucky, um, who rides. Uh, the the imitation arena cross series oh they they're not they don't even use that can't even use that name anymore um but and but he also significantly more more importantly he rides uh supercross also and he did well at um he did well at guthrie um i think more realistically kyle peters let him do well at guthrie um playing the championship game, which worked out really well for KP, you know? So yeah, man, uh, good racing, good racing all night. Apparently there was, uh, some kind of altercation during the B main, um, guys running, I don't know, racing for seventh or 10th or something, um, got into each other and ended up, uh, taking it to the pits after the fact. And, um, let's just say helmets were grabbed, dukes were thrown and, and, uh, real men that want to fight, take their helmets off just saying, but whatever. Um, they're both good kids. I know them both Luke Dickey and, and Jackson Brax Brassfield. I know them both. They're both good kids. I'm sure it was just a heat of the moment thing. Um, who knows? Maybe there was a hot chick involved, you know, you never know. Um, but, uh, yeah, it made, I'm, I, they about broke the internet with their little brawl. So, um, so as I was going to say is like, leave it to today's technology to where they could film it all the way from the racetrack and then how it ended up in the tunnel and then past the tunnel and then everything after all documented. Yeah. Yeah. So proud moments when they become grandparents, right. Um, <laughs> at least they can say they fought for what they believed in. Yeah, and it's all, you know, and it's all on video so you can watch your your fighting style and see what needs to get fixed. Yeah, definitely, you know, that's the beauty of hockey fights is, you know, you can always go back and look at it and and plan for the next one. That's how you become so, a world's best goon. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Improve your style. Man, there is there was no better goon than Kurt Fraser and you're going to have to Google him. Cause you probably have no idea who he was. Um, true and correct. Yeah. I Tiger Tiger Williams was also another great one. I wouldn't say Fraser. They, they both played for the Vancouver cannots. I mean, Canucks, <laughs> um, back when I lived in BC and, uh, Tiger Williams, dude, he, he was like, at one point, I think he was, uh, scored like, 20 something goals mid to high 20 goals in a season and was like the highest penalized player by two times in the NHL. Yeah. So if you think about it, it's like, if you weren't 
in the sin bin, think how many goals you could have gotten. But then again, that's not your job. So, right. Yeah. And, uh, Kurt Fraser, man, he was, he was gnarly. I, I, he was a one punch guy. So, you know, they, they'd square up and, and he'd throw one punch and knock the guy out pretty much every time you'd either knock him out or the guy decide he didn't really want to fight. Yeah. That's um, how you, that's how you play a whole season without getting injured. One yeah. punch and done. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So anyways, um, we, we kind of sidetracked, but not really. Cause it was kind of a hockey brawl. Um, it happened in sort of a hockey arena. Yeah. It, I'm sure they play hockey there, you know, maybe not. They'll maybe get it do. some year when they yeah. catch up. Um, you know, uh, there was Jersey pulling, there was helmet slapping, uh, you know, um, they had their riding gloves on, so they were protected. Uh, so, you know, whatever, it's all good. Um, just adds to the excitement of what is AMA arena cross championships presented by kicker audio. Dude, they're, they're following this year, Robbie and his crew. I had a real nice talk with Robbie, Robbie and his crew. Um, and I want to give a special shout out to our boy, Sean Smith, who is uh, operations coordinator for Robbie. Um, man, he, he, he juggles a lot of things and does a great job and still takes time to coach little kids and help little kids and encourage little kids. And, um, you know, he's the kind of guy, I don't think you want to be on his bad side, but if you are, maybe if you throw a little kid on a dirt bike in front of him, he'll back off, you know? Um, but no, he's done a hell of a job and Robbie and his team have done a hell of a job with, with promotion, social media, um, just gaining traction for the series. And, uh, you know, as a representative of kicker audio, does my heart good that, that we're getting, you know, more and more and more exposure, um, TV numbers are up, which we had great TV numbers last year. They're up even higher this year. So, you know, it's for coming in their first year, um, man, I'm pretty excited for next year. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think night ended up with KP going one, one and KB going two, two, um, you know, and it was a pretty good night. Wrap things up. Mr. Rocky from art street audio stuck around, helped me pack things up a huge help. Um, dude, we, we, uh, got things packed up, got back to the hotel and, uh, Everybody was like, oh, did you see what happened? I'm like, no. So there's about five or six of them with with uh, videos of the scrap. And so, you know, we covered that. That was uh, um, and then they were all going out somewhere for for to eat. And I'm like, no, I'm not going out with y'all because um, I, I can only imagine, you know, so. Yeah, so and it was late. I called it night, got some rest, got up, uh, went and had breakfast with uh, the great West Kane again, and then uh, got packed up. Had a fortune enough to have a direct flight from Little Rock, Arkansas to Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, so, you know, pretty smooth flight. Got in early jumped in the old Slovo and, uh, uh, you know, just beat my way South the race to the race through the desert to the river, you know? So, um, good weekend, great weekend, really, uh, good times. It was a great way to, to wrap up this season for me. Um, man. And then on top of it, you know, um, Saturday, as I'm traveling, uh, you know, I'm getting, uh, before I started flying, I was getting pretty consistent updates from, uh, my, uh, championship contending bike chief for Mr. Young Jake Young, find him on Insta at young underscore one, three, three, right? Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, 
Yeah, and I know I, I was pretty excited that um, you guys or Jake, um, I I think we talked off the podcast about some things that I would change going back desert racing with a stock vehicle in regards to fueling. And uh, I think some of those secrets got leaked to young Mr. Young and uh, adaptions were made and it seemed like it worked, which made me very happy. So with that, Cole, the crew chief, hit us up. What happened at D38? What was it? The I called it the speed limit 100, which I always thought is a weird name for a race because you never want to have a speed limit, but right. either way. Yeah, so weird format because it was not necessarily a uh, loop race. It was a is a lapped race, but it was a timed lapped race. And so I know we talked about this a little bit last episode, but it ended up being a 15-mile course over an hour and a half. And the first two races seemed like it was pretty much without a hitch. Cool. It's going to be an hour and 15 minutes. And obviously we weren't out there checking Odo's or anything, but it's supposed to be a 15 mile course. Okay. So all morning we've been, because yeah, when I say all morning, we had all morning because his class <laughs> didn't start until noon, you know, and that's if it's on time. So I remember we talked about that. Yeah. yeah. So I still ended up leaving early, early in the morning. Cause I didn't want to see another car all the way out to El Centro, <laughs> you know, like I wanted yeah. to have my, peace and quiet time in the dark. So that's what I ended up doing. But yeah, so I got there and his dad was there and his and his two buddies, Dean and Ashton. And we'll get back to Dean and Ashton. No. Um, <laughs> but we had all morning to kind of figure out what our strategy was going to be. And the best thing that we could figure out, it was like, okay, this is a 254 stroke. It's got a big IMS tank. It's almost three gallons. Theoretically, this might be a no pit stop race because you might be able in the 254 stroke to do the hour and 15 minutes, no stops. And now like as pit crew, it's like that kind of bums you out, but it's also like such a huge sigh of relief. You're like, okay, well, we'll be here if we, if you need us, but other than that, go do your thing. Right. So of course, just like always messing with this bike, you know, Jake and his dad, in the morning of trying to get the air fuel mixture right it's just there's just a ghost i don't know what else there is to say it's like there's just a ghost in this bike and down low it doesn't like it and up top it runs beautifully so jake does his bomb run practice and i'm out there i'm his umbrella girl and there was one other guy doing it at least so at least it didn't look too goofy but trying to keep my rider cool on the bomb right. run out well there done. and uh yeah so so we had basically decided that even though it's an hour and 15 race, we will expect to stop one time after three laps. And then that will be your final lap is starting your fourth lap. So we won't even have to take that much fuel because if you can do four laps in an hour and 15 on a 50 mile course, like that's, that's pretty good average for desert racing. That's pretty good. So something miraculous happened where we were sitting there getting ready for lap three to start. So Jake had completed. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to back up. Jake had the best start I've ever seen that kid do. And was it was great. It was start. filmed by his buddy Ashton. I mean, it was like 4K, you know, 60 frames a second. They got this beautiful video of right when the banner drops, Jake was just gone. And of course, somebody on a 450 caught him right before the first hill. But nevertheless, he was gone like almost two seconds before the next guy on his line. So Jake oh, yeah. just had a great start with no dust. So we'd going back after his great start, we went back to camp and it was four of us. So it was me, his dad, Doug, and then his buddies, Dean and Ashton. Well, we'd been waiting around all day. And so Dean and Ashton decided, well, we're pretty hungry. I think we're going to go to McDonald's. What do you guys want from McDonald's? And it was like, no, we're fine, man. Like the race is happening right now. Like, not all morning. We were sitting here all morning. Now the race is happening. Yeah. You guys have fun at McDonald's. It's like, okay, well, we're going to go to McDonald's. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> okay, whatever. You know? During the race? <laughs> During the race. Well, During guess, the race. Yeah. So it was, okay, so it was just down to, to Jake's Jake's dad and I. And so we're, we're sitting there and it was like, well, 
I guess we'll be ready for him after two laps, just in case, right? Just look down pit road, make sure he doesn't need anything. Well, sure enough, right at the start finish line, there's a split where you can go back out to the course or come back into pit. And Jake, I don't know what happened out there, but he decided to come in after two. Okay, so we grabbed the fuel can, came in. Jake had his gas cap off, ready to go. He said everything was fine, just needed fuel. I was like, wow, this is kind of surprising that after 30 miles, almost a three-gallon IMS tank was out of fuel. I still really haven't figured that out, but the bike was really, really empty. So we actually ended up filling it all the way up. And Jake being a racer, he's like, I don't need much. I don't need much. Just quick, quick, quick. Get me out of the pits. <laughs> because somebody in his class was actually right behind him as well. I mean, you could physically see him down pit road. So one, Jake had the intuition to be like, okay, the bike is not going to make it another lap. I need to fuel, which yeah. I've never done that in, in any of my races. Never been able to look down and say, okay, I need to come in right now. So good on you, Jake. <laughs> Two, having situational awareness of where your competition is. I mean, that just shows veteran move beyond years right there. For so we sure. actually ended up fueling the bike all the way to the top, which actually in the time, you know, Jake was like, I don't think he was that happy about it because he's trying to get out of the pits before, you know, his competitor gets, gets out in front of him in the dust. Right. So long story short, after three laps, they throw him the white flag. So now he's going four laps. And so it ended up being, we're in an hour and 15 race because it was the last race of the day. They decided to go two hours. Oh. And so if you look at the results, Jake and somebody else ended up going four laps in his class, and then they shut the course down behind them. So it's almost like if you could have relayed to him, like, hey, you can chill right now because you just have to finish this lap, you would. But, of course, there's no communication, nothing like that. Right. So, So Jake's just full kill going for four laps. So long story short, he comes in and once again, now he's only done 60 miles theoretically and we fueled the bike to the top once and that thing was like almost out of fuel. And it was, if you know what a steel frame desert tank looks like, it was down to the wings on the side. Yeah. I mean, that bike was low. And so wow, kudos to Jake for hauling ass and getting four laps from the second line and the 250 novice class. But man, I mean, just talk about strategy all out the window i mean just everything thought about the last week two weeks none of that even mattered luckily jake had the intuition and and jake had you know the the feeling to come in for fuel because like i said we went from a from a no stop race to where it couldn't have gone better pitting after two because he ended up going four laps so well great job to jake on your on your unofficial of course still unofficial it's p1 but he got ninth overall from the second line. So that's, that's huge. That is huge. Um, and I, I saw you sent me his lap times and wow, dude, super consistent lap times all within that. Right. Right. Yeah. 20, 28 and a half to 30 and a half. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You, yep, yep. Um, which, which, you know, stellar, I mean, dude, his, I think his overall race average was like 29. I think I figured it out 29, eight or something like that. Yep. Exactly. That's, yep. that's pretty, pretty amazing. If your average is 29, eight, your fastest is like 28, five and your slowest is 35 or 36. Uh-huh, yeah. Or slowest whatever. is like 30 and a half. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty damn consistent. So great job there, Jake. Um, and you know what? Don't sell yourself short crew chief. Um, man, someone had the intuition to get everything ready. So they didn't get surprised when that second, when that first stop happened on lap two, not lap three. So, and it um, so could have easily happened. We were, we were deep in talks talking about life and everything. And it's like, well, let's just make sure that Jake doesn't want to come in, you know? So luckily he even thought about, but it would have been easy to just, he could have come in the pits and we could have been sitting there talking about, skies and trees birds and bees and whatever right. so yeah so you know kudos also to the bike chief for being there i mean oh yeah i was being ready being there um you know that's a natural ability also um and i think part of it is you know you've been on the other side you've been behind bars 
so that now you have the intuition that a lot of the other people working pits or bike chiefs or whatever don't have because they haven't been out there, you know? I mean, yeah, I, th- I think they'll probably one of the worst feelings is coming in and, and nobody's ready for you. Right. Can yeah. Only imagine. No d- <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I got to take a drink of my liquid death mountain water, kind of clear my throat. Not a sponsor of the show yet. Certainly not a sponsor. Um, yeah, no, dude. It's like that, that when you sent me lap times and the pit stops, um, and you had a quick pit too, yeah. um, which, you know, and then the video of the whole shot, I was like, holy cow, dude's on a roll. You know, that's great. Um, that's a big step from last year's five minute pit stops and, uh, this year's season opening DNF, you know? Yeah, it's getting better, and I hope it uh, continues on this path. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, you know, as long as you remember that DNF, always, like, chewing on the back of your ear or the back of your neck, um, man, you, you always, like, for me, if we had a DNF, it was like, okay, what else do we have to do to be prepared? If that can go wrong, what else do we need to do, you know, and and just – you just kind of plan it out, but did any of most of the scenarios that my hyperactive mind came up with some, you know, million two to million five scenarios play out? No. Did we ever lose a lug nut? Did a tire ever fall off? No, not without an axle attached to it. You yeah. Know? Right. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, just, yeah, definitely, definitely uh, heads up on your part. Super heads up on Jake's part. What an improvement to be so consistent um, on the lap times, dude. That's that's so, so impressive. There are probably pros out there. Obviously, there was a lot of racers out there that, you know, wish they could have done that because he finished, what would you say, ninth yeah, overall? Yeah, ninth, ninth overall. Yeah. Which Pretty is... damn impressive. Oh, funny story about that. So... And he's riding a Yamaha, right? Uh, and not a new one either, you know, yeah, so, so, you know, you know, he's, uh, humble beginnings No, but after the race, it's, it's kind of hard with those guys because they either post the results immediately, or you got to go find the club owner's brother, sister's cousin, who's got the laptop before they pack <laughs> it up and leave for the day. Otherwise right? you're not going to get to know results for a month. So anyway, so I, I went up there and I said, Hey, I'm trying to find results for my guy. What's your name? You know, I go Jake Young. And I, I, I swear, I keep trying to reiterate to this guy that I'm like, yeah, it's my buddy. I'm like 44 X Jake young. And he goes, well, first of all, man, good job. You got first in class. I'm like, all right, well, thanks. And he goes, but, and it was like a serious moment. He goes, dude, you got ninth overall. And I'm like, wow, we woo. Wow. <laughs> so that's when I took the <laughs> Ranger and I hauled ass back to camp and I'm like, well, you want the good news or the bad news? Good news is you got first in class, but no, there's no bad news. Ninth overall, which just, I mean, at that point, you know, people had beer McDonald's and we're all happy and beer yeah. spraying. And yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. It was uh, just that's cool. rad. So, so what's the next run for you guys? Are you guys done till fall? So now, it's a, so now it's a two month break. Um, and it's kind of interesting because it's been nothing but desert racing and then they have a two month break and then it's going to be a grant, a legit grand prix at Glen Helen. So, Oh, sick. Talk about my real neck of the woods is 45 yeah. minutes of Glen Helen. I'm like, all right, let's do this. So, yeah. And that's a, I know that's a track you're very, very, very familiar with. Yeah. So. And Jake is too, you know, he grew up yeah. there as well. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you know, now instead of three hours from the house, it's 45 minutes from the house and there's a Bass Pro next door. So it's going to be, going to be a little different format next time, but yeah. So that'll be May 21st. District 38 Grand Prix, and then it's like three months off. Might as well be three years off. It's going to be a long summer. (laughs) Yeah, no doubt. So, oh, that's rad, man. We got to, we'll get Jake on here one of these days, but I'm thinking maybe after the season, at the end of the season, I don't want to put any undue pressure on him. No, absolutely Um, not. He's out having fun. So, why mess with that? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, um, but speaking of end of the season, we got, you know, Kyle Peters, we've talked about him, Kyle Bitterman, um, you know, they wrap the season next or this weekend and, uh, Kyle Peters is, uh, is itching to get on, get on along for the ride. So I think we're going to round him up pretty quickly That'd be after awesome. the season wraps. Um, you know, mid mid season interviews is one thing, but now that, you know, uh, by the way, I was corrected, um, on, on the arena cross championships, there is two that are higher than Kyle Peters. Uh Oh, all right. Who? Buddy I don't Antonis. remember. Okay. But buddy, buddy is, is the first one. And there the was goat. someone else. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well then so, I will do my research, but, uh, you know, I think Peters is well on track and I, and I'm, I'm, thinking that phoenix honda and david eller uh you know why not keep him in arena cross because he's just killing it you know oh yeah it's i mean talk about long road of a career to find out what you're meant to do on this earth right yeah for sure without a doubt so you know um that's exciting this weekend i am actually literally on the road Y'all will be along for the ride this weekend to the legendary Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park um, right outside of Chandler, Arizona for the American Flat Track Super TT, the first Super TT they have had in uh, four years, I believe, and the first time they've been back to Wild Horse since it was firebird in 19 is that correct yep correct okay so and i believe since we're talking about first um i haven't googled it to be sure but i that may be where jd beach got his first american flat track win possibly i mean the guy is so versatile that leave it to him to win a super tt the most we'll call it goofy style racing that the flat track community will do all year. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I have not been to wild horse pass, so I'm, you know, I haven't, I've seen, you know, I've had racers win championships there when I sponsored them. I've had, uh, multiple wins as a sponsor there. Um, I've watched it on TV um everything from drag boat racing to top fuel um short course all that um so i'm really excited to be there tomorrow afternoon and uh get the ball rolling and get to see all my uh all my american flat track family and of course catch some of the new super twins class that has brought all production twins super twins together and of course some parts unlimited singles presented by kicker audio um should be exciting probably the most exciting part is i get to see my buddies uh uh scotty d scotty yes Hubert. sir shout out to scotty yeah my boy and uh ralph shaheen um and of course Kristen beat and her camera guy brian Brian Piro, uh, BP. I guarantee I won't steal your snacks like somebody did last weekend. I'm not going to make you cry. I like you. I'll give you a hug when I get there. Um, but yeah, dude, it's, uh, I'm super excited for that. And then, uh, and then we're going to be cranking out some episodes cause I'm going to be here in the, in the, uh, Stoffis. <laughs> I just made that up. That's a studio office. The stuffus. Stoffus. It's not the Stoffus. most romantic name, but it makes sense. Right. So yeah, I'm gonna be here for a couple of weeks until Desert Storm gets rolling. And uh I've got to get that kicker marine audio in my boat, man. It's I'm 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 down to where I gotta cut a couple of four holes in some fiberglass. So I'm not stoked about that. 
hopefully I'm smart enough to remember to wear a long sleeve shirt that time. I hope so. Um, we'll see. And, uh, man, other than that, I think, I think, uh, we're pretty close. You got any, uh, parting comments? No, just, uh, while you were talking, I verified that was JD beach's first win in the premier class. Yeah. Not that I'm a fanboy or anything or Cole's a fanboy, but yes. Um, I love Fair that. Like kid that. How death. could you not be dude? I'm so jealous all the time. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. And I actually, you know, I, I should, while we're talking about American flat track, uh, I was blessed enough to have lunch with, uh, Arnie, uh, team principal for the fast track 11 racing or fast track racing program, super twins running the KTM Duke eight ninety slash seven ninety. Um, and, uh, Bronson was with him, Bronson Bowman. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. And there, you know, there, I had an opportunity to talk to him some, uh, it was a good lunch. There was, there was many, many, many legends there. Um, I often af- ask myself at that lunch, what I'm doing at that table. Um, but you know, it's just, uh, it's always a great time and it's just a bunch of guys, you know, so oh, cool. We're pretty, I'm pretty stoked to do that and, um, be able to do that, be able to see Arnie, uh, Matt, the bike chief wasn't there. He had to go back to Montana. Um, he is now back, uh, in Havasu and I'll see him either Thursday night or Friday morning, uh, out at the track and, uh, yeah. And then he'll be back here hoping to get lunch with him, uh, Tuesday, with the crew. So that'd be pretty exciting. Um, we'll see, uh, man. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just super excited. I'm super blessed. I'm feeling the flow. Um, you know, it's the, the AMA arena cross championship presented by kicker audio series. 2023 is, has been, um, one of the tougher ones for me, I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, but shout out to Robbie and his crew. Uh, I think the tough, toughest part is just, it's four days. So it's travel day, setup day, race day, breakdown, travel day. Um, there's no extra day in there. That's an extra race day. Um, although at first I wasn't crazy about the new format. Um, I kind of love it. I love what we're doing and I absolutely certainly love the exposure that the kick performance audio is gaining out of it. Um, the traction and I'm very grateful for all the dealers, uh, you know, that have come out and helped me, um, work the booth with me, just super rad guys. Um, extra special shout out to my boy Chester in Tulsa, dude. Thanks for listening. Always feel free to throw me some input. Hope things are well. Um, hope you get out to have a Sue soon. And of course, special shout out to my buddy, Jeremy and his crew trailers direct of Springfield, Illinois. If you're in that area and you need trailer service work or you need a trailer, go see him. Honest, upright, good standing, great people. Go check them out. Um, with that, man, special, special thanks. Kelsey Morrell film, find her on Instagram at Kelsey Morrell film. The, uh, she's working on a couple episodes. She had some finals to write for her, uh, TV and movie production degree or whatever it's called. Um, and so she was, she was, uh, working on getting that stuff all done and some production stuff to do. And now she's back on along for the ride episode. So we'll have another along for the ride episode up on our YouTube channel, which is mad dog media, M a D D O G space M E D I a on YouTube. Um, thanks at Kelsey Morrell film, check her out, send her a message. Of course, the premix podcast on Instagram at, the premix podcast all one word t-h-e-p-r-e-m-i-x-p-o-d-c-a-s-t that's our boy cole sharing his passion for all things desert 
through the lens and just does a great job, man. The other side of, of what he does is he will get on the mic and rock your event. You need an MC or an announcer, light him up at the premix podcast. Of course, bomber. eyewear, Tommy and his gang, you know, these are just, I was, I was talking, we were emailing the other day and I told him, man, I just can't imagine seeing myself wearing anything else. These are so comfortable. They're so tough. Um, this is a paid promotion, but the first four pairs I, I had, I bought. So, you know, it, it is a paid promotion now, but I started out as a customer and I just absolutely love um, the product, the strength, the durability. Um, man, it safety glasses, non-safety glasses, polarized, whatever style, whatever color. They've got everything. Check them out. BomberEyewear.com. Don't forget, they float. That's Most right. Most importantly. Yeah. Yeah, especially for that lake life coming up, right? That is bomber eyewear.com. Um, and where would we be without our homies at kicker performance audio, always taking care of us, always looking after us, the absolute best quality audio product, American owned audio manufacturer, um, probably the only american owned big name audio manufacturer left um mr steve irby thank you for your vision thank you for believing in me shout out to the marketing crew over there j dub and associates thank you for believing in me and and working with me and trusting me trusting your brand to me out in the field um super appreciate y'all we're glad to have you along for the ride you can find them at kicker.com all your 12 volt needs whether it's your car your truck your sand rail your golf cart your boat your jet ski oh that's a brand name your watercraft um your super chicken uh do whatever you need golf cart uh personal audio earbuds bluetooth headphones bluetooth speakers even if you want to put some kick-ass patio speakers up they got them find them at kicker.com with that cole what you got parting statement uh keep the rubber side down keep the rubber side down for sure we all know how important that rubber is with that i want to thank you all for being along for the ride mad dog out